Yep, the Saginaw pump conversion on our first generation Explorer is in. Still need to take it out for a longer test drive, but I've driven around the block a few times. Um, to put this Saginaw pump in the Explorer, I had to change a few things. First one you can see there, I had to uh, modify the factory bracket a bit. Being the 4 liter bracket, it actually is still a complete solid piece on the front of it. I had to cut out on the side. You can see I got a little happy there with the uh, Sawzall, cut a little too far at one point. And I actually could have uh, cut a little bit less on it, but when I was trying to figure out how much to cut, I was putting the bracket with the pump on there at the same time, which is making it kind of hard to get exact measurements. I should have done just the adapter piece first, then the pump on it. Uh, so let me go over the parts that I ended up using for this. This can is from PSC. That is a remote reservoir can for a Saginaw pump. The pump itself underneath, well, of course you can't see that, that is from an 84 Ford van. It actually is uh, 1980 all the way up to 1996, if I remember correctly. The pulley is off of a 95 van, so you probably could just grab a whole pump with pulley from a 95 van. Yeah, so you can kind of see a little bit of it here. There is an adapter plate right here. That is also from PSC. That is the 5 liter adapter plate to put a Saginaw pump on a Ford 5 liter. I did have to trim that a little bit also to make it fit, but I got it in there. The power steering reservoir, that is actually taken from a 2000 Chevy Astro van. The hose itself, uh, well the return line is just you no know, 3 8 oil uh, resistant line. But the pressure hose, which you can kind of see down there, that is actually off of an 85 Ford van. I'll try it from under to here. There you, can, and you can see it actually runs from the steering box. It runs forward, then goes down, then comes back. And you can see it right up there. And it comes up and then goes in like that. Um, 85 to... Actually, I'm not even sure. But I know the 85 has the correct fittings that will fit the steering box off of a 92 Explorer, which is actually the same fitting off a 91 van, so that ought to help, because that steering box that's in here is actually off of a 91 van. Um, the remote reservoir can, if I remember correctly, that is a 10 a and fitting on the top, which is basically 5 8 hose, so I go from 10 a and to 5 8 and again, oil resistant line right at the bottom. The bracket, I just grabbed some old pieces of uh, metal roofing, a little bit of bending, a little bit of cutting, it's up there. Once I know everything's working the way I want, this is the reservoir I want to keep, I'll make a new bracket for that, but that's good enough for now. All right, let me go and start it up so you can hear the difference. This is actually really quiet. There's the engine fan, it's actually the transmission fan, so let's turn the wheels here. So you can barely hear it. So that's much better than it used to be. Now if you're, uh, oh before I forget, one of the other pieces I had to get. When you buy a power steering pump without a reservoir, you don't get this fitting. There you go, on the camera. There we go. You don't get that fitting. Basically it's this fitting right here. So I took this fitting off of a 94 Ford van. I also took another one off of an... 1980 they were pretty much identical except the colors were different um, I might eventually modify the pressure relief valve to get a little bit more pressure But the Saginaw pump already puts out about 1300 psi, so I may not go much uh, much higher than that That is the typical Ford style power steering pump. It is not the Saginaw style uh, If you're wondering why my Saginaw pump looks a little different Let me go wander over to the van and I'll show you what the Saginaw pump looks like when it's the way you expect it to be All right, so there you go. That's a Saginaw pump, also known as Can-Tam. So that's what you probably were expecting. I'm running the same kind of pump. The only difference is I am running a remote reservoir can on it. And then, of course, I have a serpentine belt pulley on there taken from a uh, 95 van. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. But hopefully that will at least give somebody some pointers as to uh, how to put a Saginaw pump into a first-gen Explorer. Possibly even the Rangers with the 4 liters.
right, so the Saginaw power steering pump conversion is done again. Uh, assuming I get my video editing done right, the previous clip should have been of the fluid being sloshed around in the old reservoir, which is now sitting down there. Um, I had to switch over to the PSC reservoir. I really tried not to do that because the PSC reservoir is not cheap. It's about $170, give or take a little. While that one that's now sitting in the pan down there is $10. Uh, the one that's in the pan is about 21 ounces total and then the PSC one is a little over 40 ounces if I remember correctly. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it in here. Let's try this. There you go and no you can't see it but there's actually a filter in there so fluid of course goes from the reservoir through the pump, through the pump, down to the rest of the steering system. On the return line, it actually comes in, goes through a filter, and then goes into the fluid. So it gets rid of all the uh, slosh that we're getting before. There's almost no movement in the fluid. Um, let's see here. On my line, yeah, I know there's a little kink right here. I'm probably going to try to shorten up this line a little bit more or just get this to go farther on. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. I left a, wanted to leave a little bit of a uh, curve like that in there since the motor moves and the uh, reservoir isn't going to move. Let me go and start this thing up here. And you'll see it's nice and quiet again. And on top of that, up here and with the old reservoir you would have seen the fluid moving all over the place and with this reservoir you can see that the fluid barely moves unlike the old reservoir where that fluid was being kicked all over the place which was foaming it up now it's no longer foaming I have the reservoir mounted onto what's left of my inner fender. Yeah, you can see right there. It's a couple of bolts going straight up. So you can watch this here. To help strengthen the metal that is going through, I have a uh, piece of flat steel with some screws in there. Some spacers to lift it up some. And what I'll probably eventually do here is double nut these so they don't come loose. So this guy's right there. I still need to do some removing these specific wires around. Basically, this reservoir is where these wires used to be, so I need to take care of that. Let me just move the camera around here so you can see the system. I don't know if I ever did this in the other videos. No. And then, of course, then there's a, uh, a vent on this one. There it is. And I just zip tied it over to the over to the overflow line. There you go. And I guess that's it. Let me guess, uh, turn the wheels back and forth some with my foot on the brakes. Just put some load on it. And you can tell I need to do some work on, the, work on those wires over there. I managed to break the uh, wire for the, uh, for the oil pressure. So there you go. This is my foot on the brake. Yes, you can barely hear it at all. I took it for a test drive already, drove about 10 miles, and then uh, kept the RPMs probably around 2,500 RPMs when I did it. And it was nice and quiet when I got there this time, where with the old reservoir, that's where that other clip was, where it was actually pretty noisy. So I guess that is it. So uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment, whatever, and I'll try to answer it 